What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. Hope everyone's doing well and I hope you enjoyed today's video. This will be our monthly iTrust Capital video, but first we're going to run through a few things related to the Bitcoin price chart and some recent news. And regarding IPWE, a Casper partner, I put together a huge post on Twitter with all types of information. I plan to do a detailed video over this this week as soon as we get some more announcements. So I encourage you to check this post out if you're interested. I tried to link and source everything I could. So this is the first post I made yesterday as well as a second post yesterday, so two posts. So let's quickly go through the Bitcoin price chart comparing the previous cycles and then we're going to dive into iTrust Capital linked in the top of this YouTube video description. Looking at the Bitcoin price chart today, after the ETF approval, the halving is another day closer. This is a presidential election year which typically results in stimulus and if you go back to each election year, it is typically the same year as the Bitcoin halvings, 2012, 2016, 2020, and 2024. Each of those years for the crypto asset class have typically been bullish years, but my biggest concern is falling back into accumulation and closing below gaps. Whereas my biggest hope for this year is for this cycle to potentially start early and close a full weekly candle above the 50% retracement, the full body and wick included. Because during the last three cycles when we got a full close above the 50% Fibonacci retracement in 2013, 2016 a full close above it wick and body included, even 2020 we have historically gone right to an all time price. And the Bitcoin price chart today has wicked up to the 618 but we have yet to close a full weekly candle body above the 50% at 42,100. So last week I went through each of these cycles to try to measure as accurately as possible. In 2013, after getting a full weekly close above the 50% with not even the wick touching the 50% Fibonacci retracement, we went and created an all time price within 28 days. In 2016, looking at the Bitcoin index, notice we never got a full close, fell back down, and then later got a full close and we created an all time price in approximately 98 days or 3.2 months. And in 2020, on the weekly Bitcoin index, we can see the 50% Fibonacci retracement served as resistance with candle bodies closing there. One, two, three, four, and fell back down. And we did get a wick up to the 618 Fibonacci retracement where we've hit thus far. We can see here we never got a full close, even wicks still below or touching the 50% Fibonacci retracement. And right here, this is the first candle that did a full close above the 50% retracement and we created an ultimate price in approximately 49 days. And today, looking at the Bitcoin price chart, swing high, swing low with the Fibonacci retracement. Zooming in, we can see we've still yet to get a full close above the 50% Fibonacci retracement. For the last three cycles of 28 days, 98 days, and 49 days. Taking an average of the length of those three days is about 58 to 60 days. So during the last three cycles, 2013, 2016, and 2020, after getting that full weekly close above this level, have historically created an ultimate price between 1 to 3.2 months. So this is another confluence that I'm considering if and when we see that. So I personally find that interesting and wanted to share. Again, looking at cycles can be helpful, but there's no foolproof indicator that guarantees the future. The future is always different, even if there are some similarities. So there are pros to the Bitcoin price chart today, but there are also different cons if we consider past cycles during a retracement. And the level I'm watching is basically where we're at today, interestingly enough, at 42,100. This weekly candle closes in about 6 hours, so it's definitely not going to be this week, but I'm hoping in future weeks, otherwise we're going to be following 2019 and come much lower. Now earlier this month, I shared the monthly Bitcoin price chart showing the monthly RSI during previous cycles and explaining that this is the do or die moments. In 2016, we retraced to this level on the monthly RSI about 66.21 fell back down before an all-time high. But the pullback was minimal and we maintained above the 21-month EMA. In 2019, we also rejected the same level but we fell back into reaccumulation much sharper into a big crash in March 2020 before the all-time high after the Bitcoin halving. And this was the Bitcoin price chart on January 11th. We can see the RSI got to that level at 66.2. When Bitcoin went to 48k as high as 49,000 to the 618 Fibonacci retracement, just like this previous cycle. So on January 11th, when the momentum was much higher, we actually did get up to 66.21. But if we look today at the Bitcoin price chart, the RSI shows that we never even got to that level because momentum fell back down. The most important thing I'm looking at for Bitcoin to create an ultimate price either this year or next year is when the monthly RSI pierces 70. Every single time we have pure 70 into white into overbought on the monthly time frame we have always created a new ultimate price for the past 3 cycles. Even right here at the end of 2021 despite it being bearish divergence we still pierced and created another ultimate price. So that's why I'm looking at the Bitcoin price chart looking at that 70 level we even rejected it here back in 2012 and then we finally got going. So big picture I want to see two things before I can confidently say Bitcoin is heading to an ultimate price. 
One, getting a full weekly close above the 50% retracement around 42,100. And two, seeing the monthly RSI take out this previous resistance at 66.2 and pure 70. Because historically, during the previous three cycles, when at pure 70, we have always created an all-time high price. And during a Bitcoin all-time high, the monthly RSI historically has at least reached 90 to even a little over 90. And what we've historically seen, and remember, the future can always be different, but I'm basing this off of historical data. Bitcoin pushes into new all-time highs, with the exception of some assets potentially leading Bitcoin and moving well before Bitcoin. And as Bitcoin finds its peak or its market top, it then crashes. And what we've seen for the highest majority of alts is as Bitcoin finds its top and pulls back, there are typically one or two months after that called alt season where alts can outperform Bitcoin massively. And if we look at the Bitcoin price chart during previous cycles on Bitstamp, we can see we got the retracement up to the 618 Fibonacci retracement perfectly before the Bitcoin halving. We maintained above the 21-week EMA and held this trend line into all-time highs. In our previous cycle during 2019, we also got a retracement up to the 618 Fibonacci retracement before the Bitcoin halving date in May of 2020. But instead of holding above the 21-week EMA, we fell back down into reaccumulation. Drawing a similar trend line to 2016, this is more of an internal trend line we can see holding this level, getting back above, and then maintaining above the 21-week end all-time highs. So I find it interesting that the previous two cycles both retraced to the 618 Fibonacci retracement before the halving, and we have done the same thing this year, with the Bitcoin halving set to take place in April of 2024. So I'm looking at a similar trend line that we drew for the previous two cycles as well, and still watching the Bitcoin price chart today in this ascending channel. The first major support level, we can see the 21-week EMA right around 37400 Beyond that, we still have a very large open weekly fair value gap as well as a smaller CME gap in this entire area between 34000 to 37 k For me to stay bullish with the hopes of Bitcoin creating an all-time price, I want to stay in this ascending channel ideally even above this weekly fair value gap. We can see above that we did in fact close this sell side imbalance above on the weekly time frame. We still have other large weekly fair value gaps above at 52,000 and 60,000. Looking at the Fibonacci retracement as well and seeing if there are any confluences with those fair value gaps, we can see the 702 is right at that level at 52k or 53k. The concern for me here is if Bitcoin doesn't take off in the coming months in this ascending channel, I'm afraid we could follow 2019 and close these below gaps. Where we have open CME gaps which you can see on the ticker BTC1 exclamation point as well as a large Bitrix weekly gap which is essentially what we did during March of 2020. But I'm still keeping hope for a Bitcoin all-time high price sooner or later. Just like we saw in previous cycles, when Bitcoin pushes into a new all-time high price, we saw a variety of assets absolutely take off. Even meme coins are completely dead projects that just got a bunch of volume rotated into them. So overall, guys, I know historical analysis might seem silly, and there's no such thing as perfect analysis, fundamental, technical, quantitative, etc. But I find this helpful to keep my expectations in check. In previous videos, we measured the past cycles top to top, low to top, having the top, having to all time high, election dates, etc. With all that showing the possibility of an all time high price either this year or next year. If you don't believe in another all time high price for this asset class, I get it and I don't blame you, and only time will tell. I believe this asset class becomes a major asset class, especially considering the size of other major asset classes like bonds, stocks, and even real estate measured over 100 trillion today. While it's estimated that 10% of global GDP will be tokenized by 2030 and global GDP is around 109 trillion today. Even if it's not 10%, if it's 5%, that is still trillions of dollars. Okay guys, let's dive into iTrust Capital. This is linked in the top of the YouTube video description for anybody interested in a crypto Roth IRA. This is what I've had with iTrust Capital since January of 2020. And the benefit of a Roth IRA is it can grow entirely tax-free, so 100% tax-free, so I'm paying 0% in capital gains on all of my profits. And I like this platform a lot because there are no monthly fees. It is free to start. There's no hidden management fees or hidden fees you're going to get hit with each year. So I can trade a variety of digital assets with tax-free gains 24-7, 365 at my fingertips on the mobile application or right on my PC. You can just buy and hold any of these assets and there's a 1% transaction fee if you trade. Essentially the same fee as Coinbase, but with Coinbase you're paying taxes on all of your profits, short term and long term. And I'm not necessarily day trading with my Roth IRA, but I like the option to be able to rebalance, sell a portion of my portfolio directly into the US dollar instead of leveraging a stable coin where there's counterparty risk. So whether I think we're entering a big bear market or a big bull run, I can allocate between US dollar anytime I want. I encourage you guys to check them out if you're curious. They do leverage a qualified custodian per the terms and conditions. If they go out of business, we legally get our funds. I can't say the same if you had your funds on other exchanges and you didn't read the terms of service. 
Before I trust capital, I had my crypto Roth IRA with Bit IRA, but the fees were crazy. I'm sure a lot of the fees on other platforms have come down, but still, I trust capital to this day has been the best for me. And there are all types of accounts you could create for you as an individual, a traditional or a Roth IRA. I personally have a Roth IRA just because in the crypto asset class with this asymmetric potential, with any big wins, I want to make sure I'm paying as little as possible in taxes. One of my family members rolled over their 401k from their previous employer. And some people may want to fund an account directly for their LLC. So I'm personally a big fan for iTrust Capital. Of course, it's a lot more fun talking about these platforms when assets are at an all-to-my price. But I'm very happy that I rolled my Roth IRA over to iTrust Capital before the last bull run back in 2020. Keep in mind, early 2020 wasn't fun. It was March 2020. Assets were at all-time low prices. So again, a qualified custodian, your assets are held in enterprise-grade cold storage with MPC. So they are sharding the private keys into three different parts. So my assets are never lent out or borrowed against like we've heard with other platforms. And they're regulated. So this was a big fit for me because I originally had a Roth IRA in the S&P 500. It did fairly well since the markets were pretty strong over the past decade, but I rolled it into crypto and it has done much better than if it were just in the S&P despite the S&P being at an all-time high. Looking at the S&P 500, it's at an all-time high price, but when we really zoom out and actually measure the percentage return, I mean, even back to 2017, where it's at today, it's just up 100% or 2x. Whereas Bitcoin even since its previous cycle low, not even back to 2017, we can see it did over a 2,000% move versus 100%. Or even just looking since 2022 during the cycle low, we can see it's up 171% more than the S&P. And keep in mind, that was looking at the S&P 500 years ago. Even since 2022, we're up about 40% versus Bitcoin over 170%. Now we know the obvious, crypto in this entire asset class is nascent, it's unregulated, it's very risky. And that's also why we can see insane volatility, major crashes, but also major bull runs with hundreds if not thousands of percent in return. The cool thing about iTrust Capital is you can start with an account as small as $1,000, you don't have to bet your life savings. And that's a big reason why I choose to have exposure in the crypto asset class. The risk is significantly higher if you just want that 7% a year, 10% a year in another index in the S&P 500, be my guest. But some people decide to have a portion of their portfolio in risk on assets if you consider crypto to be risk on. And even if I did have a smaller account, having a Roth IRA helps me keep that long-term vision. I'm not looking on the four-hour chart. I'm looking on the weekly. I'm looking years out in the future. And during any future bull runs, if I made really good returns, I could take that out, go back to Vanguard, and put it in the S&P. So I personally like the flexibility that this offers. If you go to iTrust Capital and you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and see the FAQ, and you can click the Get Started Walkthrough. So they have video tutorials, blogs, even a learn center taking you step by step to set up. And this whole process is so much more streamlined than when they first launched. Showing you everything on the left, including setup walkthroughs, onboarding, FAQ, funding, security, you can call them or submit a request. So with the approval of the Bitcoin spot ETF this year and all of these exchange traded products for Bitcoin being backed by actual Bitcoin, many people believe that Ethereum alongside other assets in the future will have spot ETFs and it is just a matter of time. Referring to here in the United States, we know other countries and jurisdictions have already had SPOT ETPs. But it's great to see this year the approval of a SPOT ETF in the United States, not just futures contracts. Because these SPOT funds actually are required to be backed by the digital asset itself. So we have iTrust Capital linked in the top of this YouTube video description and in the pinned comment. If you decide to create an account and fund it, you get a $100 funding reward in USD. Some traditional investors may prefer to use a standard broker and buy the Bitcoin ETF, but you have limited trading hours. That means you're only able to trade Monday through Friday, maybe six to seven hours per day, and you don't have freedom and you're not actually owning the digital asset. You're owning shares of that ETF or that exchange traded fund. And to each their own, but I prefer to hold the actual digital asset and be able to trade 24-7, 365. It's late Saturday night and there is volatility in the market. I can sell, I can buy, I can do anything I want at my fingertips. So by using iTrust Capital, we're actually purchasing the real crypto asset. We're not investing in a company who is then investing in that asset. We'll finish up today's video playing a quick clip on how to use conditional transactions on iTrust Capital. Thank you so much for watching this, guys, and huge thanks to all that hit the like button, and I'll catch you in the next one. Hey there! Wondering how to use the conditional transactions feature on the iTrust Capital software platform? Here's a walkthrough to get you started. First, open your mobile app or desktop app. Navigate to the buy sell area of the app where you would normally place a market order. You may now click on the word conditional in the header, which will change the type of transaction being placed. Next, you'll set parameters for your transaction. For now, let's focus on how to input a conditional buy and we'll cover a conditional sale after. 
The first parameter you'll input is the conditional price for your transaction. The conditional price is the price in US dollars which you want to execute the transaction at if the asset were to reach that price. Let's use an example. Let's say you go to a grocery store to buy apples, but apples are $2.15. You tell the store manager that you'd like to buy apples if their price goes down to $2. In this example, $2 is the conditional price. Next, you'll input the purchase up to amount, which is the amount of your funds that will be used to purchase the asset. This amount is in US dollars. Let's use our previous example. The store manager asks you, well, how much would you buy if apples were $2? You might be tempted to say 10 apples, but in this case, the store manager would say, I actually need that amount in dollars. So you would instead say, hmm, $20 worth of apples. Rather than saying 10 apples, you would say the amount in dollars. Relating it back to our software platform, you'll input the amount in dollars that you want to purchase up to. You can review your conditional transaction by clicking the review dropdown. Once finished reviewing your transaction, click on Submit Conditional Buy if you're ready to place your conditional transaction. You'll now receive a confirmation pop-up that will allow you to once again confirm your transaction. This is a chance to cancel if you made a mistake, changed your mind, or no longer wish to place the conditional transaction. By selecting Confirm, you agree to place the transaction. After confirming your transaction, you'll see a confirmation screen stating the details of the transaction. Click OK to exit back to your dashboard. Now let's cover conditional sales. The process for placing a conditional sale is almost exactly the same as a conditional buy with one key difference. If you'd like to conditionally sell assets you already own within the software platform, you'll proceed through setting the first parameter, the conditional price, just as you would in a buying situation. However, when you're ready to input a funding amount, you'll input the amount of tokens you'd like to sell up to if the transaction were executed. This sell up to amount is in tokens rather than US dollars. To relate it back to our Apple analogy, you'll now be telling the store manager that you'd like to sell up to 10 apples rather than selling $20 worth of apples. Just to recap, when you're buying, the purchase up to amount will be in US dollars. When you're selling, the sell up to amount will be in tokens. The rest of the process is the same with the button now stating submit conditional sell. After confirming, you can select OK to navigate back to your dashboard. To access your history, navigate through the dashboard top left menu button on mobile or left hand menu on desktop to view your transactions and manage conditional transactions. You may cancel your conditional transactions at any time unless they have already been executed. Thank you and we hope we successfully educated you on how to use the conditional transactions feature on the iTrust Capital software platform. Still have questions? Visit our FAQs linked in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate if you could hit the like button, let me know your thoughts down below, and my link tree is linked in the top of this YouTube video description. With all links, crypto resources, and discounts, I'll catch you in the next one.